why do I want you to use structural equation modeling instead of multiple regressions? Because you can only predict one thing at a time, and I might want to predict a whole bunch of things, and I might want to have things in the middle, and I might want to have correlations in there. So, come on, regressions just aren't going to do it. This is giant simultaneous equation modeling. So it's not just structural equation modeling, it's simultaneous. Everything's being estimated at the same time. If you have big M. Complex models. It links the measurement model to the structural model. You're using full latent variables. You have correlated predictors. You have the unexplained invariances. You can have moderation and mediation, as long as you can explain it. So here's this kind of dumb diagram that A and B are correlated, but they have multiple variables. They both explain C, which is a single item, and together C and B explain D, which is also latent. So all this stuff can be done. So here's an example from my paper from 2008, where we had four factors that are correlated, and they influence reading score. This is the structural from once you get these lines go out of the box, you're in the structural component. <coughs> How does this structure relate to this structure? And exogenous, the sources, endogenous, the endpoint. So there's an endpoint here and an endpoint over here. Because the item is the end point. And as I showed you this morning, if I want three and four, two to, to be correlated, but both caused by one, and both contribute to four, then the only way to show that two and three are correlated is to put that on the residual. It does not mean I'm correlating the residuals, it means I'm correlating these factors. Okay? So it looks like evil correlated residuals, but here it's the only way I can correlate two latent variables in an endogenous position. And uh, this is what Amos did. This was our elegant theoretical model, and it says these things are all correlated with each other. See, I've had to put the correlations there. And these things predict, have predictions on other things that are correlated, and they contribute to this. So one, two, three, four contribute to this, and two contribute to that, one contributes here. These are correlated. These are all correlated. So in order to do this, to have we sometimes used the residual to get away with that. So, the exercise is beliefs about assessment, which you played with, to do these <coughs> beliefs influence how they choose, what they choose about assessment. And as an exploratory technique, which I report in the article in 2009, we did first a multiple regression analysis. This factor score, this factor score. And you had to do it separately. This interactive score, and it only explained 2%. And there were only two significant and almost significant predictors. And then this one, we got 8% variance explained. So the regression analysis is not very big effect. But when we put it into the structural equation model, the, those same four one, two, three, four predictors became 32, 33, 14, and 17. So yeah, this is smaller than that, but they're much smaller than, much bigger than 2% and 8%. Much bigger than 12, 10, 14, and 14. They become 32, 33, 14, and 17. So structural equation modeling, because it's got all the data, all those variables, all those relations at the same time, can end up having a bigger effect. It's a truer report. 
This is the IQ study that I was mentioning before, where you can see the student's performance on an IQ test, that four, four sets of items, influenced how students perceive assessment and how parents perceive assessment. So the more you're better at IQ, the more you say, I cope with testing. That's a really good news story. Smart kids cope better. If you have high IQ, you don't worry so much. Yay, that's good. We don't want kids to worry at school. We want them to be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Their parent, they then also said their parents didn't hassle them as much. They also said, no, we don't get tested a lot. The kids who are smart don't think they're being tested. If, their, if the kid was smart, the parents also thought, no, the school's not demanding too much. They're not, they're not putting too much demand. My kid's coping. If their kids had a higher score, they also thought, well, having grades at school is a good thing. If my kid is successful, yeah, sure, grade him, test him, not a problem. Is the school putting too much pressure on? No, it's not. Negative 30. Parents... If my kid is smart and doing well, I don't think this is a problem. So all those parents who are worried about their kids, maybe they're just worried that their kid is dumb. Next question about uh, what's this, uh, this data, will this data collected once? At yes. Once. yes. When you speak about uh, influencing, uh, is it okay to have not many, maybe a single uh, Ah, you're talking the fundamentals of is a structural equation model that looks like causation actually proof of causation if it's not an experiment or not a longitudinal, longitudinal study? And the short answer, of course it's not proof, but it's surely indicative if it's consistent with theory, that maybe this is a good theory to work with, so let's experiment with it. I mean, the argument here is, if you could make the kids smarter, they would be less panicked, they would cope, feel like they're coping better, and their parents would be less demanding also. And notice, these dotted lines are the path line <laughs> from the parent to the child. If the parent is relaxed about school pressure, if, sorry, if this parent has a higher score on school pressure, school's putting too much pressure on, the kids say, the kids' eye coping goes down. If the parent said too much pressure, the kids' worry goes up. Parents can distort kids' experiences. And if the parents think school demands are too high, then the kid tends to think there's too much testing. Kids come from home listening to their parents and repeat basically what the parents told them, right? And all of these negative things go away if the kids are doing better. If the kids are clear. Now this IQ test is not a school test. It's not a curriculum test. It's a, how many words do you know, and can you answer these equations, and can you mentally fold it, and it's just a, it's just a survey, we're just trying to find out, it doesn't, it's not going to affect you at school, so it's a really low stakes test, and what we find is, smarter kids cope better. Well, duh. Right? I mean, you would have thought that was obvious, and maybe... And the thing about the IQ test, items on IQ tests are learnable. Items on IQ tests are teachable. The skills underlying those items, without teaching the items, you can teach the skills. Because it's vocabulary, synonyms and antonyms. How do you learn that? You go to school, you read books. The more books you read, and the more people you talk with, the more words you know. That's teachable. It's mental shape folding. So they had to go, here's a shape. Which one of these shapes would fold up into that shape? Well, you can practice those things and teach people how to <laughs> mentally rotate and bend and take a different perspective. You can teach that. 
maybe you would use them to make sure everybody learns art so they learn about perspective and angle. And the other one was simply math skills. Well, you could teach math skills. I mean, we've been teaching math skills for a long time. So items and IQ tests, I believe, are skills that we can teach and should teach. And if you teach the stuff that's in here, the kids will be happier, the kids will be more relaxed, the kids won't be panicked, and the parents will be OK, too. That's the hypothesis that this model generates but needs to be tested. In this model, uh, you suggested uh, theoretically that intelligence uh, influences attitudes yeah. of both children and uh, their parents. parents. But also, having all these uh, variables, uh, you could uh, look differently and decide, for example, that I don't know, uh, parental attitude. Uh, mediates uh, relationship between uh, intelligence and children's attitude or something. Sure, and that's why we tested alternative models of parents were the source, kids were the source, IQ was the source. We tested those alternative models and this was the better fitting one. But it's not proof that the interpretation is correct. It's the development of a plausible hypothesis because it's consistent with research on the effect of intelligence. Okay. Time to play. So, instead of using factor score, manifest variables, use latent measurement models and assemble into desired paths between the constructs. So, remember this ugly thing? Very simple, but we've reduced everything to a factor score. What if we had that factor and its items, this factor and its items? We've seen that model, so we want that model explaining this and see if you can get a solution that says, with full structural equation modeling, that um, how people, how kids perceive assessment influences which practices they select as assessment. And there's your syntax. So there's factors, specify, run it. I don't want to show you the results until you try. All right? Workshop time. Help each other. This is... Ah! So copy, paste, it, or open the syntax file and get it into our studio. Get the data set into our studio. It's the NZSCOA data because it's got all the variables. And create these models. Oh, tired, huh? Not enough coffee at lunchtime. While you get going, I'm going to go to Lou and I'll be back to help you with questions. Thank you. 